Hey folks, welcome to another edition of Play Branson, where you get to know Branson's entertainers better. My name is Chris Meyer. I'm going to be your host today, and we have Chad Rudin as our guest, and he is with the Pierce Arrow Theater. So in just a moment, stay tuned, we will have uh, him on the show. So guess what? It's almost fall in Branson. Actually, fall, the first day of fall is September 23rd. There's lots of things you can do in Branson in the fall. Great time to come to Branson. There's some things that people may not think about doing here in the fall, but a few things you may want to consider is Dogwood Canyon. Uh, that's just south of Branson. Great place to, whether you bike, uh, ride a Segway, fish, you can go out there and eat, but uh, with the fall colors could be something to think about. There's lots of trails in Branson that you can actually hike. Um, sometimes people don't think about all those things uh, that can be done. Of course, we have great golfing and awesome shows here in Branson. So lots to do this fall in Branson. Also be sure to catch the new Pumpkin Nights out at Silver Dollar City. Okay, I've got a couple dumb facts for you today and I would never have known this. There's actually music made for, especially for cats. That's right. Apparently cats develop their musical taste soon after they're born. I sometimes wonder who are the scientists studying this? Some cat music includes not only traditional human-made instruments, but also feeding noises, bird chirps, and purring noises. That is a dumb fact for you today. There's, there are over 1,000 adaptations of Shakespeare's works, another one, and in 2012, the Smithsonian officially recognized video games as an art form and had an exhibit to comprehensive, comprehensively examine the evolution of video games as an artistic medium. There's our dumb facts for the day. We'll be back in just a moment to hear from Chad Reed. There are so many things to do in Branson. You need help planning and booking all your fun. You need iBranson.com. You can find everything Branson has to offer from your computer, tablet, or cell phone. You can even buy tickets online or talk to one of their friendly Branson travel specialists. There's no sales pitches, no delivery fees, no service fees, and no waiting. It's fast and easy. Find your fun at iBranson.com. Do it all online or call 877-ENTERTAIN. That's 877-368-3782. iBranson.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Play Branson and today we have the newest member of Pierce Arrow, Chad Rudin. Good yeah, to buddy. have you here, man. Good to be here, Chris. So nice to see you. It's been, we, you and I were talking before we started shooting mm -hmm. that you were actually one of the first entertainers way, almost like two, over two years ago on the show. And Absolutely. so now you're back. I'm back. I'm back still doing my thing. Yeah. You know, that's kind of the fun thing about this business is you always tend to be back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so you've done a lot since then, mm -hmm. but let's, let's, Take people back to how you got into this business and kind of what you've done over the years. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I started in the business really young, uh, per se. My grandfather had a country band when my brother and I were young, so we sang in that and kind of got the vibe for music. And my grandfather was a, I don't know how to explain it, a musical genius in a sense. Mm. He played like eight instruments, so music was really important in our house. And then I kind of grew up doing that. My brother and I played fiddles when I was a kid. And, Kind of did all that. And then in high school, I was in a, a championship show choir, which is kind of a, for people out there who don't know what that is, a, you know, singing and dancing, that kind of thing. Um, and we were nationally ranked kind of, kind of wow. group. So um, met a lot of people through that and kind of started my life that way. Um, I got to college at Elmhurst College, which is outside Chicago because of that. Um, mm -hmm. I met a guy there who, who I met somebody else and got a scholarship and that kind of thing and went as a music ed major. And once I left school, I started auditioning and getting work, and it was awesome. And I st actually started in the uh, theater side of things. Yeah. So I did a lot more theater when I was younger or when I was in college. Um, so I did like the whole union theater stuff, the equity theater, the uh, uh, big, you know, big time stuff. And then um, after that, I was in LA doing some TV things that were, you know, trying to be a TV star like everybody yeah. is. Did you get it? Did you get any? I did a few things. I did yeah. a few things. Um, I did a couple shows on the History Channel, and I got to do some extra work, which is kind of fun, and got to be on some sets like The West Wing and ER and that kind okay. of thing. It was like in the early 2000s. And then I moved out here because my brother, Chisholm is his name, and he's also an entertainer in town, which it's really cool to have someone in your family that does the same thing as mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And I'm a year older than him, so he was out here in Branson doing a show called The Promise over oh, at yeah. the Mansion Theater a long yeah. time ago. And he was like, you should come out to Branson. I think you'd really enjoy it. You know, I was looking for something to do that was musically oriented since I was doing all the TV stuff, and I was looking for a new place to go. And so I came to Branson about <laughs> 14 years ago. So from that long now. So from L.A., to Branson, mm -hmm. that's, that's a big that's a big change. It's huge, it's huge. <laughs> but it's funny. I grew up in a small town, so for me, 
it was almost like coming back home a little bit. Um, and I love the big city. Like I said, I went to school in Chicago. I, I lived in LA. It's faster. It's, uh, how do I explain it? There's more things to do all the time. Yeah. Um, but uh, there's more of a family oriented kind of feel here in a place like Branson. And that's kind of where I grew up. You know, I was at my cousin's every day, that kind of, that mm-hmm. kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So it was nice to move here and get the small town feel, meet a lot of new friends. And then, you know, 14 years later, I have friends that will be my friends forever. Yeah. So, um, you know. So what was the first job that you got here in Branson? When I was in Branson. So when I first got here, King's Castle had just opened. It wasn't King's Castle at the time. I can't remember what the name of the theater was, but it was the 12 Irish Tenors. And I had moved here looking for a gig. And I had auditioned um, for Silver Dollar City prior to that, and I hadn't heard anything from them. So I auditioned for the King's Castle, or whatever they were then, the 12 Irish Tenors. And I got that job. So that was my first job. Got a call from Silver Dollar City, and they offered me a job. So I was kind of in a weird place. And so I worked at the... Uh, with the 12 Irish Tennis for about two months, and then I started over <laughs> at Silver Dollar City, and then kind of from there on, I, I you know, I, the city was kind of my place for a while. Okay, so, and so were you doing the Echo Hollow show? Yeah, I was doing that. The first show I did there was a show called Heading West, which was uh, kind of a show about a guy that traveled in the 1880s that traveled west to make money for his family, that kind of thing. So I did that, and I played the foreman in that, so that was kind of fun. And then I also did Dickens' Christmas Carol, which mm-hmm. was over at Silver Dollar City, and in that season I played Fred, I think, so I was Fred, and then I played a bunch of other characters. Now Fred, Fred was the guy that needed the wings, right? No, no? that's a whole different no, show. that's a different show. A, I was in that one, too. <laughs> um, but uh, Fred is the guy that's uh, uh, Scrooge's nephew. Okay. And so he kind of, you know, misses the family love from Scrooge, that whole thing. So I was that perky guy. And then after that, I did Echo Hollow. Um, which was really fun because I did a bunch of country music, which um, growing up with country band and that kind of thing, country music was kind of a fun thing for me to do. And worked out there for a while. And then I'm a busy guy. I do a lot of things. I I try to do as many shows as possible. Um, Probably done 20, 25 shows in this town. So I I, I try to work because I love what I do. So it's easy for me to go, do I want to sit behind a desk or do I want to do music? And I'll pick yeah. music. And so, because you've worked in so many shows, like those people could have seen you on a lot of different stages mm-hmm. in town here. Mm-hmm. And so, sometimes, you know, shows don't just, they don't last forever. No, they and, don't. You're right. Um, and so, sometimes that's why you go on to a different show, because mm-hmm. for whatever reason, that show, Absolutely. that show will close. And so, you did a, um, you did, uh, you worked with Barry Williams yep. at the 70s Music Celebration. Mm-hmm. And uh, for those of you that don't know who Barry Williams was, that was Greg Brady. Yeah, it was Greg and Brady. So, and Greg, I think, lives in Branson. He doesn't have he a does. show here. but he. And so I think I saw one of the last shows he did, and it was a great show. It was a, it was a show. fun show. And to be fair, uh, Barry Williams is one of the nicest guys I ever met. You know, I know people get a lot of the you know, the bad, bad vibe from being a famous person and all that kind of stuff. But he was nothing but loving and great. And the show was fun. The cast was fun. Um, I actually got to be really good friends with Barry and I got to go to his wedding, which was cool. Get a celebrity wedding and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, yeah, good people over there. And, And it was sad when it was done. But I think Barry's, you know, it's Barry Williams. He's got a million things to do. And, yeah. and you know, I think he just kind of decided to focus more on that. Right. And he loves the Ozarks, so he was like, I want to live here. So yeah. that's kind of what's going on yeah. with him. But He also did um, Forever Young. Yes. And talk a little bit about that show. Forever Young was a show that was dear to my heart. Forever Young was a show about five guys who grew up in a small town, who played Little League Baseball together, and they would go hang out in their friend's mm-hmm. basement. Um, and, and listen to vinyl records, and that's kind of what they did, and that's basically how I grew up. Um, and it was about five guys who learned through music how to live their lives and how to succeed. And uh, it was one of those shows, you do, I mean, I've done a lot of shows in my life. It was one of those shows that you felt really connected to, the audience felt really connected to, and um, it was nice to work with my friends. You yeah. know, I, and not yeah. that I, you know, Branson now, I know a lot of people, but right. you know, my friends that I grew up with, you know, it was kind of yeah. cool. And so I think that was maybe one of the first times, maybe I'd seen you before, but I remember mm-hmm. seeing you and I'm like, that guy can rock it. Uh, like you can sing. <laughs> Thank you. And so, cause you did a lot of kind of rock music. In yeah. And that show I did a lot of rock music and it, and it gave me the opportunity to do things that maybe people in this town didn't know that I did. Um, because you know, when you come to Branson or you do any shows, they're doing country music, you're singing country, they're doing jazz, you're singing jazz. It was nice to do Forever Young because it was kind of this open platform to be like, hey, Chad, what do you want to sing that represents who you are? Yeah. And so, again, another reason why that show is dear to my heart. Yeah. So. Hey, folks, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back in just a minute. It's all right, have a good time, because it's all right, oh, it's all right, bang, 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 All right. 
it. It's what you try it, old man. Come on. When I get done, you're going to say, my, my, is there no end of that boy's talent? <laughs> Or maybe not. Hey, folks, we're back with Chad Rudin. Yes. I've about, I've about said the wrong thing. I, I know, hate it's, that. It's I hate fine. That, it's that fine. happens. And so you've had this. You've had this wonderful career and done lots of different things in Branson. And mm -hmm. so talk about how you got to Pierce Arrow and what's going on there now. Yeah, Pierce Arrow, first of all, Pierce Arrow is a really exciting adventure for me. I, uh, I, when I first moved here, Pierce Arrow is one of the biggest shows in town. So to get an opportunity to be a part of a group like that was really cool and really exciting. I uh, had done Forever Young and left town. So I was kind of looking for work. I did the Meg 7 show last year just mm. to fill in for Joe and Tamara. Um, they needed someone last year. So I was kind of doing a little bit of that, but I was looking for something big to do. And Tony Turner, who works over at Pierce Arrow, is a really good friend of mine and kind of mentioned to me that there was an opening um, over there. So I went over and talked to Dan and sang a little bit for him and did that whole thing. And they really liked me. So that's exciting. And then um, they hired me. And I tell you what, I've been there now four months. One of my favorite gigs I've ever done. Um, they, you know, Dan over there really runs a really awesome ship and we, we do fun music and we kind of do stuff that we want to do and, yeah. and it's kind of more of like an Eagles rock band kind of feel now. So, um, I really enjoy it over there. I so, can't say enough about it. So talk about the, because you have, you have decades mm -hmm. and then you also have Pierce Arrow Gold. Yep. And so you're doing basically two different shows, same theater. Talk, talk about the shows. Yeah, the shows. Um, uh, the sh both shows are, are great in their own way, and both of them are a little different. Um, the Decade show that we do um, is, is a big favorite now in town because it's, it's kind of a new thing in town. It's only been around a couple years. Um, and the Decade show goes from the 50s to the 80s. So it starts off with more of the 50s kind of vibe, and then we'll do stuff like Huey Lewis and stuff in the 80s. And the nice thing about it is it gives people an opportunity to kind of see their memories in front of them. So the show itself really takes people down memory lane. Um, and uh, like we even mentioned things like, hey, your first kiss and those kind of things. So people mm -hmm. kind of understand that that's kind of what we're relaying to them. Um, and they have fun. I mean, we close with a, uh, a Kenny Loggins song. And, and so it's just a, it's a really fun show. But more importantly, it really shows off the talents of the entertainers. There's a lot more solos in that show. There's a lot more features in that show. Um, and I guarantee if you come see it, it, it you'll know almost every song that kind of yeah. show. And then the other show is Pierce Arrow Gold, which is kind of a collaborative collection of the greatest hits of Pierce Arrow over the last 20 years, which is kind of cool because I'm new. So I, yeah. I get to kind of enjoy things I've never done before as my greatest hits, which is interesting. Um, but it's got some really cu cool music. Dan's really stepping it up with the show. We, we open with a Doobie Brothers song and we do some uh, uh, a John Cougar Mellencamp and CCR. And so we really, really get, and, and that show is more focused on four part vocal stuff. Um, but uh, again, it's, it's, it's fun, it's, it's music people can bop to. Um, that's one thing that's great about the show now and the direction we're kind of taking it, it's turning into more of a concert feel mm. than a show feel. And, and so over time, like as the audience mm. is somewhat changed, then yeah. you guys are adapting the show. Absolutely. And that's what you're, and I remember, I think I went to decades, that was last mm. year, and literally this, this guy that was older than me, and I'm getting older, but yeah. like he was in front of me and he was just like, yep. he was loving it. Yep. And you could just tell he loved the music and, and that's the nice thing is, is, you know, music can change very easily for oh, a show. Absolutely. And especially with the age group that's kind of coming into Branson now, um, it, obviously we, we're, we're catering more to what they like. And there's more people that like the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. And we're kind of falling into that whole groove. So we kind of give them yeah. a splice of that just to get them excited. Um, but again, yeah, it's one of those shows you bop to. You know, yeah. uh, it's exciting. Now, besides all the music, yep. you guys have a comedian. Yes, Mr. James Sibley. Um, literally one of the funniest human beings I've ever met. Um, very cool guy. Very intelligent guy. Mm -hmm. um, so you know why he does so well on stage. Um, he just has a really good rapport with the audience. He's really funny. He, he writes jokes for a lot of famous entertainers, so he's got a really right. good mind when it comes to comedy. Yep. And people just roll. I've been in a lot of shows, and I've been in a lot of shows with comedians being in Branson, and I've just never heard audiences roll. They laugh so hard when he tells jokes. And of course I know him, so I've heard these jokes every night. So for me, it's like, I cannot believe how much they love this. So yeah. he's, he's kicking it, man. Yeah. He really does a great yeah. job. And he has been on the show before. So if you, ha if you didn't see that episode, 
uh, be sure to check yeah. that that out. Um, one of the things that changed, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you guys are not doing afternoon shows anymore, and so you're doing evening shows only, and so you're alternating between shows. Yes, so we do a show at 8 o'clock every night except for Sunday. Um, yeah, we alternate between the two shows. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday will be the Decade Show, and then Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday will be the, will be the Pierce Arrow Gold Show. And it's cool as an entertainer, first of all, that we don't have to do 12 shows a week, which is nice. Um, it gives us, makes us more prepared for the shows. Um, and also, um, it's nice to do different thing every night. Yeah. You know, as an entertainer, you, you do 500 shows a year, and you're, you're constantly doing shows, you know, all the time. And you stop and you go, wait a second, it's nice to do a different one every yeah. night. You know, 500 is a little more, but you know what I mean. Yeah. So are you, do you have any songs where you're just like belting it out? Like yeah, a lot of it? them. A lot of them. I uh, get to sing a few tunes. Um, me and Tony get to sing uh, Carry On My Wayward Son by Kansas, which oh, is fun. that's a good song. Because Tony and I, even though we've known each other for years, we've never gotten to do a show like this together. So it's kind of fun to have two guys who rock out a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we can do some different choices with some things. Um, I get to sing a couple new songs. I get to sing a song by... Uh, uh, Good As You is the name of a song by a guy named Kane Brown, which Dan wants to incorporate some, some of the newer music just so some okay. of the younger people kind of feel that vibe. And then my favorite one that I sing is a song by Tim McGraw called Humble and Kind. Mm, yeah, um, that's a good song. It's a good one. It's hard not to cry when I sing it because when you have kids in the audience and you sing that to them, you want to be like, please listen to what I am saying because this is like life, you know? Mm -hmm. And like, you know, kids don't understand that, but you want to yeah. be like, hey, be yeah. nice, be humble. Humility is an amazing thing in this world, and once yeah. you become an adult, mm. humility is, I think, the most unbelievable trait in a human being because it's the t chance for you to step back and go, hey, what didn't I do right about this? To understand what's right and what's wrong is an amazing trait. I think kids should understand that when they're young, you know? The, the other thing I think that's probably, that you bring to the table is not only are you a musician, but you have that theater yes. background. Yep. And so I think that probably, that gives you like the bonus. I, I lo it does, because one thing that I get a lot for people that come to the show, they're like, I feel like you've been a singer in this group for years. And I said, well, the thing is, is when I get on that stage, that's my place. Like, I'm very comfortable there. Um, I'm not afraid to be the lead guy. I'm not afraid to be the one up front. Um, and I think that adds, and again, when you've done this for 20 years, 22 years, 23 years, you start to understand what audiences want and they like. And so you play to that, because mm -hmm. obviously that's what your job yeah, is. Yeah. <laughs> so so what, are you, what are you doing when you're not on stage? Oh, what am I doing? Watching a lot of sports, <laughs> playing a lot of golf. Um, trying to think of going to cool restaurants in town. Um, I don't know, I, I, I try to stay active as much as possible. I have a pool at my apartment, so I go there a lot. Um, I don't know, um, mm. relax a lot and, and enjoy life. I also work at a place called Mel's Hard Luck Diner, oh, okay. which is a singing diner in yes. town. And I, I work there a few days a week. And it's really cool. You go there, you eat really great food, and you get a chance to listen to some really great singers. Um, and uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know you were there. Yeah. And so we we promoted Mel's on the show in the past, and it's a great, unique place that you can't get anywhere else. No, and I actually yeah. had family members that came yesterday, and they knew nothing about the place, and they got done, and they were like, "This is one of the most amazing experiences we've ever had." And I said, "That's why we do this, you know. Yeah. <laughs> That's for that reason." So that, yeah. that felt pretty good. Well, awesome, good. awesome. Well, Chad, it's, it's been great having you on the show. And so let's just recap, folks. If you want to see Chad rock it out, go to the Pierce Arrow Theater. They've got two shows there. They've got Gold or Pierce Arrow Gold and then Decades. And so every other night at what time? 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. And that's over on Shepherd of the Hills Expressway. Just hey, Chris, could I throw in sure. something real quick? Yep. I haven't yep. talked about and I promised my, my buddy that I would. Um, New Year's Eve at Pierce Arrow. We have a really oh, yeah. cool show coming up on New Year's Eve. Um, the band Little Texas is going to perform for, with us on New Year's Eve. Um, it's going to be a big blast. We're going to do an hour. They're going to do an hour. Oh, wow. um, get your tickets as soon as you can because we're selling out. But it should be a blast, and it's really fun to get an opportunity to perform with someone like that. There you go. There See, you go. There you, first I've heard of it. So <laughs> brand new news here on Play Branson. Yeah. And uh, actually, New Year's Eve last year was huge in Branson. It was. And it so was. a lot of the shows sold out. So get mm -hmm. your tickets early. And um, we'll be back in just a minute. Welcome back to Play Branson. We're wrapping it up today. We had Chad Rudin on. I tell you what, that guy is an amazing entertainer. Go check him out. Um, some things that are coming up immediately 
on September 20th and 21st, the Branson Summit. We uh, promoted it in the past, but we have Jason Crab in town, Josh McDowell, Sheila Walsh, and Lee Strobel. Uh, that's Dr. Marla's event over there at the Mansion Theater. So if you are in town, don't have anything to do, or want to like those entertainers and speakers, go check that out. Also, Silver Dollar City's uh, Fall Festival continues to run, uh, or it starts here uh, the end of September. Uh, with the crafts and the pumpkin nights. So be sure to check that out. Here's the deal. Next episode, I'm really excited about it. We have someone that's not an entertainer, but is extremely influential in town. And so every once in a while, we'll bring on an attraction person. And so we have Brad Thomas uh, from Silver Dollar City. First time we've had him on the show. So be sure to watch next week, Brad Thomas. If you're looking to plan your entire Branson vacation, be sure to go to ibranson.com. Those folks can help you plan your entire vacation. You can book it online. They've got hotels, uh, shows, attractions, vacation packages that are great deals, or you can call them at 1-877-ENTERTAIN. We hope to see you in Branson this fall or Christmas, and we'll see you next week here on Play Branson. Mm -hmm.